Hello everybody, this is Dawn. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've made a video here and it is quite early in the morning <clears throat> here in Ireland and I've got my coffee. I may take a few sips, but um, I um, I just was woken up um, uh, just uh, about 20 minutes ago with um, a sense of urgency that I needed to go ahead and record this and because I have been um, dealing with quite a lot in terms of my own uh, journey and um, uh, on an emotional level in particular this week. Um, suddenly, boom, out of nowhere. Um, and um, so dealing with all of that and, um, and you know, I was just guided that it was important for me to come and go ahead and record this. Um, so I may do this over, but I may just put it out like this because, yeah, time is uh, precious and I have things to do to take care of me. So, um, okay, so let me get to the point. Um, I um, I had a realization um, last night that was uh, really quite significant for me and feels like it has relevance for all of us um, in terms of what is unfolding now. So um, if you, you know, are um, indeed um, in a... Um, twin flame union and or um, a sacred divine partnership that um, where you are being called back together, then uh, this will be no surprise to you. And um, and I would say that I know that there are some of you who watch my uh, videos and or who have reached, reached out to me who just want this love of a lifetime and I want that for you very much. Um, but there is a difference and distinction between those who are simply seeking um, that sort of an experience and those who have been called to this particular expression of partnership and um, Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So this may not resonate um, and um, You know trust your heart to lead to um, Where it needs to but um, it was important for me to share it So what I want to do is I want to share some things that I'm sorry about my hair. I'll stop pulling with it um, I uh, want to share some things that happened um, uh, that I was led to last um, spring, last uh, March and April. Um, I've touched on them before, but I just want to share some of the specifics because I, I was shown a little bit more about what what um, what that was. So I always knew it was preparation. I posted on my personal Facebook page quite a bit uh, when I was in France. Um, those pictures are not available right now. Um, you know, but um, essentially I was led back to France. I had to leave Ireland where I was living at the time and I am now as well. Um, and <clears throat> I away was provided to, to go to France for a month and I always knew I would go, I always say go back to France. <laughs> I've never been in this life, but um, anyway, um, and that it would be significant and I was petrified um, in a way to go. Um, because I knew or suspected there would be a lot of revisiting of um, things that I didn't necessarily want to remember. <laughs> um, um, but of course I had remembered, um, but in any case. Um, so that's the personal context. So I went to, Mar uh, to France in March and I was indeed led um, quite a few places of tremendous significance um, as, pertains to uh, the story of Jesus and um, Mary Magdalene and I also was just um, visited several um, places in France that were um, I'm not quite sure of the connection but they felt like a very energetic um, similar to what I've experienced here in Ireland and other other places I've been led um, very energy was being released and um, uh, and uh, the stage was being set, so to speak. So I, I'll leave the details of where I went and all of that for another time and place. I may share that um, in a Soul Streams journey that I offer at, um, at soulstreams.org um, or my, my personal website, donrichardson.com, and uh, just you'll just have to look for that. Um, but I, I don't anticipate doing that anytime super soon. Um, so how does this pertain to... Um, this twin flame path. Well, at the end of March, so all of these places I had been were quite significant for me personally, and I could feel, you know, in a, in a more, you know, cosmic or global level um, that they were important 
sites for me to to visit um, and yet um, you know I had made no connection whatsoever with um, with um, this this experience of um, separation from my um, divine counterpart and from what I believe to be true um, in terms of the intended um, reunion uh, of myself with that individual and for others who are in such um, a circumstance. So um, it didn't seem connected at all until um, I went to um, um, a place on the, I had to leave and I ended up having to leave through the Nice airport. So I rented a car the last couple of days and I drove along the Côte du Jour um, and I went to a place called St. Maximum La St. Baume and um, it's a church there and where um, that is dedicated to um, um, St. Mary Magdalene and um, you know, there, it was very, I was intending to be there about an hour and a half. It's like my usual scheduling, like, you know, um, and I was there most of the day and, and then I was going to go to the cave of St. Mary Magdalene, um, the next, um, day and some things happened and I didn't, and then some more things happened and I was like forced to stay an extra night. And so I knew I would go. So I drove, um, there and this was, um, April 1st, um, 2016. And some things that happened on the spring equinox that were um, incredibly important, again, uh, for me personally. And I had been given a, a dream at that time, um, which was like March. It was either the 20th or 21st. I don't remember which. Um, but I um, was given a dream then that uh, alerted me to the understanding that uh, this was, it, you know, it was certainly healing for me. And it was a, about a revisiting of of things that I um, remembered um, and or um, um, a, a stream um, that I carry in my soul. And, and yet there was something bigger being opened. And so I always assumed that was about, a, about the historical Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Um, and so I'm, so fast forward, it's April 1st and I come to the woods. I hiked up the long way up the hill and it just felt drawn to do that. And there was some very deep personal significance for me to that um, and what were in the woods there and the birds and the, the rocks that I saw. And um, someday I will definitely do a, a Soul Streams journey about that. I have photos and I'm just getting those together right now. Um, but I went to the cave and um, there... Um, as expected, it was very moving for me, but there was something that um, occurred there that I'm not I'm not ready to speak to at length. Um, but it was um, it was beautiful, and it was a piece a piece you know just came over me. Uh, and again, it was this was connected to my own personal um, recollections of, um, of a uh, past life type um, scenario. Um, and at the same time, it was about here and now, and I knew that. And so I understood that, you know, something was being set right set right it's not it's not quite the right words uh, a, a way was being cleared a path was being cleared and I knew this was about more than just me um, and at the time I wasn't actually really I hadn't given up on um, on all I knew to be true but I suppose that it had been a long time you know um, many decades and so I really wasn't focused on that in my life. I was focused on me and, and, and my life and creating something beautiful. And I knew this was significant for me. But like I said, when I was in that cave, there were a series of things that happened um, that were quite beautiful. Um, but rather than go into the detail of that, I want to focus on this the piece that the piece was so, it was like a, 
it was like a like a red carpet being rolled out um only it was like a blue carpet you know like so it was like a like a, a just a beautiful pathway of peace that was being opened up and I um have great challenge with peace in my life and have of all the qualities um, um that is one that is is uh, a challenge for me in this life and I felt it very much and I felt such an honoring for and, and the angelic presence was very much with me uh, in the cave which I didn't expect to to perhaps feel that but it was it was odd because it was like these things were happening on two levels at the same time. And now that's that's a common occurrence in my life, so I'm kind of accustomed to that. But this was very different because um, the, the, the personal level, of course, was extremely moving and meaningful to me. But the, the larger thing that was happening, this like this peace being granted... I knew that it was somehow connected, um, you know, to something much, much larger than me and much more about here and now and this time. Something was happening now, but I didn't quite understand what that was. I did have a bit of a, um, a, a series of images came to me. I wouldn't necessarily call it a vision, but... Um, and the angel, I could hear the angels. So one thing that was happening for me is I could hear the angels singing when I walked in that cave, and it was astoundingly beautiful to me, uh, and deeply moving to me. And so, and I'm seeing this, you know, this, this car blue carpet, for lack of a better term, it wasn't really carpet, but you know, like this peace. It was just like peace. And it, it was just there um, for me, but again, much, much larger, something much larger was occurring. And so I, you know, I, as I was listening, you know, to this, the angels and looking, I was just enraptured by <laughs> the oddest things, you know, most people go in and look at the stained glass windows, which are gorgeous, but I, I was drawn to the, these, these uh, places on the cave wall where the water had made certain marks and they there was um there was just there was just something that happened there for me and um so as this other level was happening and i felt this peace being granted um i still wasn't clear what it was about but i did see a series of images and one of those images that i saw it was so beautiful it was it was like the hugest reconciliations you could imagine like in the bible where jacob and esau meet again or um like you know the great classic you know films and literature where um you know dr shivago the end scene or like you know all of these things but it was it was what was happening in, in this quick very very quick series of images that i was giving given was and i didn't put it together that what it was but it was of like these Everything being reordered and made as it it it, um, it has been intended to be um, set right and but not in a forced way in a beautiful surrendering coming together way and at the time I actually didn't really uh, see faces and so I didn't I didn't actually put it together with any sort of like reunion but I very much have uh, felt since December 1st, so eight months after this happened, April 1st, um, and in, on December uh, 1st, I was supposed to fly out, or very close to that, I was supposed to fly out of Barcelona. I had gone back to France for a few weeks, um, and uh, it was, I had also spent some time in Spain, and uh, I went to La Sagrada Familia, which I might have shared here. Um, and so it had been a very meaningful trip again, but I was headed home and, um, I was bumped from the flight. And so I had three, I had to wait three days at three days. And so I again rented a car and I went back to the South of France and I then had, um, what was, you know, without a doubt, the most climactic moving day of my life, um, on 
in early December. I forget if it was the first, second, or third, first or second. It was one of those days. But in any case, I it was the completion. It, com it was as as Jesus told me when I was lost going over the the mountains that it was the final completion, and uh, it was the 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 last completion of the com uh, in the completions. <laughs> um, and there's some kind of silly wording like that. But <clears throat> I was led back to a place that did have to do. Um, very much with my own um, journey um, in, in, in that life and in this life. And I had to go through it. And it was um, extremely moving and, and beautiful. And I again, I'll share that separately. But what's important to know is that it, so it was eight months um, after um, this other event. And I... In the days after, what happened was I I was led back to um, a mountain that was very significant to me, and I um, I climbed up to a place where uh, I had been with the person I loved dearly in um, in in that life, who of course I'm connected to in this life. In my in my view, um, it's okay if, if nobody else believes that, but um, in any case. Um, it was quite moving and beautiful for me. And again, um, in the days after that, as I was processing, there was like a load to process for me personally. Um, and it was as I was doing that, I, I had a couple of revisits to that whole scene of the angels and the blue carpet and this peace and this reordering, uh, like, it was like shh, everything fell into place. And I love that there's blue behind me right now. I just noticed that. Um, and everything just kind of fell into place. And so I was, I was, I had a few, a few uh, glimpses of that in December after I had this um, second experience um, in France. It was di very different, um, uh, connected, but, um, but very, very personal. Um, for me about my uh, own relationship in this life as well and so um that is you know that has stayed with me and in december end of december was you know as for all of us i think quite a few tying up loose ends and that went into january for me and i got a real um a real awareness uh in january for myself um okay so so that's that's what what happened in this morning uh, when when I, I woke up I I realized I realized that it, it's it's now <laughs> it's now like um, as um, I think you know many um, are feeling and sensing it's truly now and so three days ago. There's a ring that I always wear two rings, and um, one is a, a little Celtic uh, weave ring that reminds me of um, friends and um, all around the world and and um, love. Um, and the second um, is very was very very precious to me, and it was it's a ring with um, it's a pewter silver ring with roses on it, and that one is far. Uh, it's probably you know my dearest treasure in this life and it reminds me of the memories that I have of um, Mary Magdalene and so I wear it for that and it was a symbol um, for me of my connection and my commitment to my union and three days ago I was in the bathroom um, and I was putting on the rings, and the interesting thing is the ring, the um, the one that I, that I'm talking about that represented so much for me is the one I wear on the bottom, right? And so I had actually put them both on my finger, and literally, it was like supernatural force or something. Like the rings flew off, like off and hit the wall, and the ring that had been on top flew immediately straight down in front of me. But the other ring that is so meaningful to me just it hit the wall and it went somewhere. And it's a small room, a small, you know, bathroom with only, you know, there's a sink drain that, you know, but otherwise I don't, I don't know where it could have gone. But in any case, I spent, you know, 
an, an out. Well, I spent, so it was 20 minutes before I had scheduled um, a healing session that I wanted to be present for. It was actually a distance healing session, but I wanted to be fully present and it was important to me. And so I um, I looked for the ring for 20 minutes. I couldn't find it. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll get that later. So I went, did the healing session, took a, a nice long walk in nature, which is gorgeous. And uh, came back and I have now, you know, spent probably close to two or three hours literally everywhere on my hands and knees going through everything in that small, small space. I cannot find the ring anywhere. And when I had asked immediately when this happened, I was like, oh, like that didn't feel right. Like, oh my gosh, where's my ring? <laughs> like that's the one thing, you know, that keeps me um, connected to all that matters most to me um, in terms of a tangible something. And so I said, what is this about? And I heard Jesus say to me, you aren't going to need that anymore. And okay, so before anybody leaps to any conclusions, um, that's just what I heard. And so I didn't know what to make of that, but I, I for some reason felt an odd sense of peace. And I thought of the color blue, and I thought of restoration, which is something else I'm passionate about in a big sense. And so I was at peace. Now, granted, I've spent like three hours looking for this ring, and I, I just simply, I can't find it. I can't find it. Excuse me just a sec. Sorry, I just needed a sip. Um, and so this has been working under the surface and I've had this unexpected but somewhat expected um you know um revisit to a very deep emotional uh wound um that you know feels timeless and bottomless and um and triggered by something in this life and so I've been working through that the last couple of days that's part of the way I look, um, and um, doing what I needed to, to, or what I knew to do. And, you know, so all this was happening at once. There were several other things as well, but that's the gist of it. And so this ring, um, you know, it's been bugging me, you know, but I've been trying to just be present to it and be available, surrender um, any attachment to the ring itself and to um, what that um, stood for complete surrender, you know, not very good at that either. <laughs> so really, you know, going back to trust and, and continuing to, um, to allow uh, myself to be cared for by Jesus and the angels and to ask for support where I can, um, and to stay in full faith. Um, and, as I've been doing that several times, you know, I have been reminded of the angels that were singing um, that day in 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 the cave of Saint Mary Magdalene, and I hadn't really connected the dots. And this morning. So last night when I went to sleep, I was having trouble sleeping again, and I, so I did call on Archangel Michael to um, be with me and um, give me support and uh, see me through and help me to see the next step of what I need to do in my own process. Um, and, and, you know, I asked for him to, um, you know, teach me and help me in my dreams. And when I woke up this morning... I just felt such peace again, and I saw that scene that I had seen in the cave, and well, wow, this is a, some kind of big bird just flew by the window, which doesn't usually happen here in Ireland, um, but in any case, um, I, um, I saw that same scene. I saw the carpet being rolled out, and I saw so many souls uh, being brought back in peace. And there were doves this morning. Oh, wow. I just <laughs> connected with that with the bird. Um, there were doves in, in the, the dream or the vision or whatever that was when I woke up. And um, yeah, so I don't know if any of this has, has connected at all for anything for anybody that's watching. And I'm sorry, I'm not extremely coherent right now, but I don't think it would be much better later in the day. And I really need to do some other things um, for myself. But what I guess I want to say is that 
Um, it it feels very much like um, there you know there was that year of completion, 2016, um, and it does feel like many things were wrapped up into the year. We closed that down in early January, and and it does very much feel like new energy. And at the same time, to me and for me. And this does, this is filtered through what happened um, April 1st of last year. Um, it is, and it's always been for me, it's interesting. I always feel like it's more like in the spring when things really begin. Um, I, it's, it's so interesting to me because I actually feel more like energy about planning and all that in the fall. Um, and for me, uh, November 1st is very significant, All Saints Day. Um, but in any, in any case, um, the spring equinox always feels like the beginning and the birth and the gift um, and the new. And I do feel like there is something very significant about that for all of us. I have heard a few other people mention this um, recently. And um, actually, just this morning when I was going to come down here, I started watching a video um, that was very, um, very connected in terms of the timing. Um, so I need to go back and, and finish that. But um, I felt like it was important to share that um, because it does feel significant and not just for me. It feels like that um, there is a bit. So recently I shared um you know, with a couple of people in my life that, you know, how I've always felt in my life as if I was sort of like suspended in time and space, like, and, and it's frustrating. Um, and I actually wasn't even talking about this part of my, this, it's not a part of my life. It is my life, but, but I wasn't even talking to anybody about, um, this, this connection, um, in terms of sacred partnership. Um, I was just talking about my own experience in life and there's been, there's a sense of being suspended, and I think that right now, in this time that we are in, in um, you know, we're moving into mid-February, uh, March feels like there's going to be a lot of energy moving. Um, I don't have any specifics to share with you there. Wish I did. Wish I did for me. But um, but what I do feel is that there's like swift winds. You know, the winds of March are going to move, and things will be reordered. And we do need to be prepared, um, and I'm doing my best to focus on my own preparation um, in that regard. Um, and the what I'm what I'm shown is that that what I what I did see, um, I I just never put it together exactly. But what I, I what I'm really shown now is that that is very aligned with what is unfolding now in our inner world um many things i think will be set right um and i do think we'll continue to be in transition for the next you know three years for sure um the way that i'm seeing the, the energy at large and i'm you know i'm no expert on that but that's just what i feel and and what i know to be true um and at the same time there's a real need to um to be prepared to receive and to step onto the path and to believe that we are deserving of this peace. That has been something that for me has been a real, as I said, peace in general has been a real challenge for me in this life. Um, and I choose that. Um, I choose peace. I choose restoration and um, it feels very, very much like this is a time when we're being invited to prepare to, 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 for that because it's coming. It's going to happen, um, you know, whether we are ready or not. And if you happen to be watching this video and, you know, you, you know in your heart that, you know, that maybe this is not, you're not on this um sacred divine partnership um, you know, sort of trajectory, you are on, on your own path that in, in the same way, things are being reconciled, things are being completed, and we are stepping into something brand new. And so there is a sense that we are in a time of suspension or the in-between, um, you know, the meantime. And it is ours right now 
to continue to clear the way, prepare the way, and, and in any moment, be prepared to step onto the path.